Warfare already looks to bring a whole ton of content for launch, boasting a campaign, a huge MP experience including game modes ranging from 2v2 upwards of 32v32 and 50v50, with the in-betweens of 6v6, 10v10, and 20v20 along with maps to accommodate all of those, which we already discussed, is to be in the totals of 30 to 40 maps at launch and an accompanying 47 game modes data mined from the game files if all that information is correct since then. We have a full-on Spec Ops wing of the game, complete with what I would imagine are a bunch of missions for Spec Ops and for, unfortunately, a year, survival on PlayStation 4, utilizing MP maps to fend off the incoming waves of enemies. So no matter what way you spin it, Modern Warfare is looking to push the boundaries for what we know of as a complete package. There's no denying that there's a lot coming that's proven by numbers that you can back up with fact but the one thing that we didn't know about is weaponry or at least that is until now admittedly when the beta rolled around i was a little nervous because jumping in and seeing everything that we had we had a ton of weaponry showcased up front I don't know you may very well feel differently, but I'm in that mindset that the more shown off earlier reduces the longevity and the interest players will have for the product after launch. Infinite Warfare, I think, was a prime example of this, where we had essentially the full game, Actually, scratch that. It was, in most senses, the full game for a beta period, but it was already certified gold, meaning that it already was sent off to be pressed to discs and to platform publishers for final verification, as well as publishing on the digital storefronts. We got the full game, but with some locks on it early, but everything you saw there was going to be that full game, which in turn, mixed with the advanced movement fatigue, I think just burnt players out by the end of November or so at that point. So naturally, when I saw a large list of weaponry and one that players were like, hmm, maybe that actually is the full listing, and other pieces that were shown off intermittently, even despite not being playable, it did have me a little worried. But since then, my worries have subsided a little bit, as we've seen a few leaks that indicate the absolute insane depth of playable content is going well above the scope of what we saw in the beta. And that applies to weaponry in a sense as well. Maybe not so much as the maps or game modes, but there's a few weapons missing and a total that looks to make this game king among the Call of Duty franchise. So today we're going to examine more game data information, and that means unfortunately I can't showcase the actual game code or anything like that, but this is again courtesy of our recent friend Impala on Reddit, links will be in the description below. But anyways, to start the beta, we already had a healthy helping of weaponry on offer. While not everything was playable, they were visible in the sense that we saw the M4A1, the AK-47, the M13, the FR-556, the Odin, the Kilo-141, the FAL, the FN Scar 17S, the MP5, the MP7, the AUG, the P90, the PP-19 Bison, the Uzi, the Model 680, the 725, the R90 Shotgun, the Origin 12 Shotgun, the M91, the SA-87, the PKM, the MG-34, the EBR-14, the MK-2 Carbine, the Car 98 k the AX-50, the Dragunov, the HDR, the 50GS, the M19, the X-16, the 1911, the 357 Magnum, the Pila, the Strela P, the RPG, and the Joker. That was 37 weapons that were visible. Again, not necessarily playable, but that were visible and showcased a hefty total of what will be playable in the full game. But as we know, that's not actually the full thing, and this is where the data mined information comes from. Now, while we don't have, say, a double down on this massive list of them, we're not going to name off a ton of weapons equal to that of 37 weapons, but we end up seeing new weapons introduced in the categories of rifles, SMGs, snipers, pistols, and launchers. And this might actually bring us to a total then of the most weapons at launch in Call of Duty history. So those weapons that are brand new from the rifle category, we end up seeing the AK-12. That's one that's been in plenty of Call of Duty titles. That should be no surprise to many, but it is making its return here apparently via this data dump. Then we end up seeing that in the SMGs, we have the AK-74U curiously listed, but this is likely based off the conversion kit for the AK-47. Unless they completely change that, unless they either took out that functionality or they're adding it as its own base weapon to begin with. Also, we don't know, but that's something listed in there as well, but it definitely supports the AK-74U with that conversion kit. But then we end up seeing there's one that doesn't have any likelihood or any details attached to it, but it's just codenamed Victor which could very well be the Chris Vector, a weapon that is very popular, not only within the Call of Duty franchise, but is also something that has been a staple of that franchise, something that a lot of players from the very beginning were asking, well, where is it? 
Then we end up seeing it in the sniper category. We have additionally on top of the AX-50, the Dragunov, and the HDR, an interesting set of three weapons within that sniper category. One of which has a specific naming in the game files, but not much is really known about it. That firstly being the SN underscore A Whiskey. There's some speculation around this that may point to this being a possible Arctic Warfare series weapon, like the L11 8A from Modern Warfare 3, the L11 5A1, or the L96. It would fit that familiarity of the weapon design, as we also see the AX50 already in play. So that very well could be coming as well. The SN underscore India is unknown, but it comes along with the identifier of Bolt Action 308 Scout Rifle, exceptionally light and stable, headshot lethal. This, I've seen some potential talk that this may be the Ishapur 2A1, and that would fit the time frame if we're dealing with Middle Eastern conflict, as we see from the story trailer. It originated in India and then served its main purpose in the Indo-Pakistan Wars. And admittedly, I am no gun expert, so if my information is wrong, feel free to adjust it in the comments below. Low. But the only thing that I see that would be a discrepancy between this potentially being the Ishapur is the in-game identifier says it's a 308 scout rifle, but the Ishapur primarily fires 762 rounds. And from a brief bit of digging, 762 rounds can be shot from a 308 barrel, so it potentially could work. But again, the pieces are there, they might not line up exactly. The crossbow is also interestingly enough listed in the sniper category as well, which is supposedly the first DLC weapon that we'd see in Modern Warfare based upon leaks in the past. So this could mean a couple of different things. One, we end up seeing some of these weapons that are listed here as new, maybe being post-launch content and are just already finished in in-the-game files. But while these very well could be launch weapons, it isn't the first time that post-launch DLC items were in the beta game files. But also, two, the crossbow could potentially be coming at launch. We just don't know which, and that's a matter for only time to tell. But the part that's incredibly interesting to me is, why the hell is the crossbow listed in the sniper category to begin with? Unless I'm missing something blatantly obvious, that has me stumped. Outside of that, moving along, the pistols, as well as then the launchers, had a few added into this. The pistols included an expanded range of weaponry, the likes of the 44 Magnum and the USP-45. Both of those I don't think would be any surprise to many players, but of course, it's great to see those back. And then in the launcher category, this is where it gets a little weird. I don't know if this is going to be launch MP content or if this is in the game files for stuff potentially in campaign, but we have a couple of different grenade launchers, the likes of which don't sound too fun to go up against within MP. We end up seeing the MGL-32 grenade launcher, the Rambo grenade launcher, the MGL-32 incendiary launcher, and the SA-24 Grinch infrared SAM. Now, those are the new weapons that are in the game files and potentially will be added in. The beta, though, this time around was not the final build of the game, so it is possible that there may be more, though I think that it's personally unlikely likely that we'll see more than this total of 49 weapons, but it is possible. Now, what is curious to mention now that we've hit the end of this list is that there doesn't seem to be a UMP in this game, at least in this build, but I swear that there was one playable back in May at the Behind Closed Doors event that myself and a bunch of other press went to. My own memory may be hazy, but I swear there are others who referenced this as well, so where did that go? But for weapon comparison totals, we end up seeing that Black Ops 4 as of recently launched with 26 weapons, World War II launched with 30, Infinite Warfare launched with 34. The reigning king for the entire Call of Duty franchise was Modern Warfare 3 which launched with 43 weapons. If this list holds up and everything we talked about today is at launch, this would exceed the most weaponry we've ever seen in a Call of Duty title, and there's still a healthy amount of weaponry that is absent or could be used later on down the line as inevitable weapon DLC as the time progresses. So this list is one, awesome, and two, fascinating to me. The fact that we are going so much more in depth, it seems like, with every aspect of the game, and that makes me tremendously excited. And also, you have to consider that the fact that there are things like conversion kits that we mentioned earlier. You can make things like the RPG and the AK-74U out of the AK-47 with a few attachment changes, some caliber of bullet changes and the magazine adjustments, so the variables could skyrocket the numbers of possibilities. 
I am all for that. So when it comes down to what's going to be on offer at launch, I'm incredibly stoked. We end up seeing that, of course, like we mentioned at the very beginning of this video, we have a ton of game modes from 6v6, 10v10, 20v20, 32v32 and up with various different modes of play for each of those maps to accommodate all of them, spec ops, a full campaign, all that kind of stuff, plus free DLC across the board, no timed exclusives on that, plus what may very well be the most weapons on offer to play around with since Modern Warfare 3, and then even exceeding that. I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. So, that said, I think that's where we're gonna wrap it up. Let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. Is there any weapon that you were hoping to see on this list, but maybe didn't? Is there anything in particular that jumped out at you, and you're like, oh, that's awesome. I totally want to play around with that. Whatever it is, feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below but we're gonna keep you guys up to date with absolutely everything that you need to know about modern warfare from now until the launch and of course going even after that launch we'll be killing it with the content as well so if any of that stuff that we have to talk about interests you make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing if you guys also want to follow me over on twitter and instagram those are the best place to get talking outside of youtube right love on both those if you guys want to strike up a conversation ask me a question whatever it may be that link is down there in the description below but outside of the way thank you guys all so much for watching my name is espresso i'll see you guys later take care and peace